The Center for Audit Quality presents Profession in Focus. Hello, I'm Cindy Fernelli, the Executive Director of the Center for Audit Quality, and I'm pleased to welcome you to this edition of Profession in Focus. And for this edition, I'm very happy to have with me a great friend of the CAQ and of me personally, Randy Fletchall. Randy is a retired partner at Ernst & Young and also has been very active in the CAQ's Research Advisory Board and our research work and was very influential in setting up the CAQ and for that I'm always going to be very indebted to you. But I want to talk to you today about your work at the AICPA's foundation. You guys are doing great work there, um, particularly around diversity. I know that's an issue that the foundation is focused on. So if you could talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing there and, and some innovations that are going on in the foundation. Sure. Well, first of all, your words are far too kind, but it's Not great to true. see you again and a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, as you know, the AICP Foundation has had a long-standing objective of supporting, uh, of increasing diversity in the profession. And so we've got a long history of... Uh, of supporting minority initiatives and funding those initiatives. Uh, for over the years now, I think it's for more than 45 years, we've offered uh, scholarships to enable students to pursue a career in accounting. And uh, those are called the Scholarships for Minority Accounting Students. It's probably the program we're most known for. And uh, we awarded over 100, 100 of those scholarships this last year. So that's kind of been a, a hallmark program. But we found that just uh, you know, just providing money to go to school isn't enough. So we've, we've kind of moved into things like uh, leadership and development courses and training programs for the scholarship recipients to enable their success in school and eventually as CPAs we hope. Uh, another program that we've, we've funded is the uh, Fellowships for Minority Doctoral Students. So we've got that one too. It's also been around for about 40 years and again very successful. Uh, ever since the uh, AICPA launched the National Commission on Diversity and Inclusion in 2012. Uh, they, they've really taken the lead in diversity and inclusion, and so we've we worked to collaborate with them and uh, work together on many initiatives, uh, help fund what they undertake, and uh, they're doing great work. And then as a sign of our collaboration, we're actually scheduling one of our Board of Trustee meetings for the Foundation uh, in concert with the National Commission on Diversity and Inclusion meeting uh, to, to further work on things together. And that commission's got all the right people at the table. We have one seat at the table. And uh, they're really trying to make great strides. You know, we've made some progress over the years, but this is really an attempt to move the needle on, on both uh, you know, the recruitment, the retention, and the advancement of underrepresented minorities in the profession. So it's been very successful. Uh, there's a lot of work that's been done, but there's, like everything else, a lot of work ahead of us. And it's one of those things that it's just not, a, it's not just a nice thing to do. It really is a business imperative for the profession, so I think uh, everyone's focused on it. That's great. You mentioned uh, doctoral students. Another program that you've been very influential in and very supportive of is the Accounting Doctoral Scholars Program, which takes people that are in the profession already uh, with their CPAs working in a firm who want to go into academia and you support them and help them get their PhD so that we have a pipeline of professors. So it's a great program, very exciting. Um, we're pleased at the CAQ to help in our very modest way, but it, it's just really fantastic. So several of the uh, people who've gone through the ads program are now teaching yes, yes. Um, at universities. Yes. So it's been really um, exciting. So tell us more about how we can support those kinds of programs, uh, what we need to do to make sure that we have the right te people teaching sure. um, our future auditors. Yes. Well, let me start with ads. We have to have an acronym for everything. Has been wildly successful, as you said. It was spearheaded by Bill Azell, and uh, through, the, through the generosity and, and foresight, I would say, of our many sponsors, uh, most of the accounting firms, the state CPA societies, and many others, uh, we raised $17 million to fund uh, scholarships, 30000 a year, over four years e annually for each scholar. Uh, we recruited, as you said, some really terrific individuals from the firms, and, uh, and they've just done a great job. It's been very successful. Uh, the students, have, as students, have been enthusiastically, I'll say, received by the colleges and universities. And those who have finished and are now teaching, or are now acting as professors, um, really doing a great job. Like they, everyone should be very, very proud 
of what was truly an unprecedented profession-wide effort. This was, this was everyone working together to make this happen. And now I answer your question. I sound like a presidential debate candidate here. <laughs> uh, the real it. question you ask, <laughs> yes. Uh, what do we need to do to foster going forward? I think it's vitally important that we maintain that network among the ad scholars, that community that they've developed uh, is very, very important to their continued success. And maybe more important is making sure they stay connected to the profession. As you said, one of the, one of the things that makes them really valuable in the classroom and doing research is that they have very recent practical experience as auditors or tax accounts. And we all know over time that can dissipate that coming from a retired person, I know quite well that that can happen. So it's really important that we stay connected, that uh, we make sure they, their experiences are refreshed and they know what's going on uh, in practice as they go forward with their academic careers. Uh, one of the things we're doing at the foundation, we're kind of, as we move from mostly all or mostly scholars to now mostly professors <laughs> with the last few groups to go. We, in fact, just funded our last disbursement uh, for the last group of scholars. So we, we now we've kind of moved into another phase. And uh, so we're, we're starting some new programs. We're, we're taking a look at how we stay connected. We're looking at what events we need to have out in the future to get this group back together. We're looking at a redesigned website so we can track with their progress, track their achievements, share those with others. Uh, we just really have to stay connected. I think uh, that, that's vital to their success. As we know, we, we probably will call on them to, to give back to the profession. That's, a, that's an important thing that they do. Uh, the CAQ's been terrific in this city. Well, we, uh, we don't do a lot. Yes, that. you, you do tremendous to amount. It but it's I, such a great program. It is. But I think of the, uh, the breakfast you sponsor at the AAA meetings, uh, the fact that the RAB has kind of looked at the inclusion of an ad scholar as, as a positive attribute in deciding which grants to, to fund. Um, inviting them to the research symposium you have every year. Those are exactly the kind of things that we need to make sure we have in place going forward. So while the foundation will do some things around keeping us a network, I think the CAQ, the firms, the AIC, Bay, Triple, everyone has a real vested interest in what we do. Well, so. we're all in this together, so. So again, stay, stay tuned. It was a huge professional-wide success. I think wildly successful is, is probably a good description of it. Uh, and so successful that we're really trying to explore right now uh, maybe a variation of the original program to see if there's not something we can do to continue the spirit of finding and, and doing that matchmaking of very talented individuals who would like to leave practice, pursue a career in academia, and what we can do to, to kind of put to those To mold together. the future of the person that's, that's, that's very important. It is. Well, another important thing is bridging that gap between research and academia and what is helpful to practitioners. So, Given where you sit, you, you've been an auditor for many years, you're retired, and now you're very active in the foundation and your work with the research. Any ideas about how we can further bridge that gap, uh, particularly with respect to some of the um, performance research that gets to how auditors do their jobs? So I, I welcome your ideas yeah, on that. Absolutely. And, uh, and the CAQ has been very, very helpful in this regard. <laughs> uh, People but, are going to think I'm paying you. So uh, well, they'll think I'm paying you back, probably. <laughs> uh, you know, the first thing I think of when you ask that question really is the work of the Pathways Commission, which was uh, you know, a group sponsored by AAA and the AICPA to look at accounting and higher education. And recommendation number one talks about building a learned profession through the integration of research, education, and practice. Under that, that's recommendation number one, and under that uh, are a couple specific recommendations about uh, encouraging the academic publications to publish really relevant practice research. And then a second symbol is kind of to then widely disseminate to practice the research that is published. Uh, I think the task force working on that, again, they had about a three-year period to work on implementing the recommendations, made very good progress, got some publications out because this is useful, this is relevant. Uh, but it's one of those things that needs a lot of ongoing uh, care and feeding. So I think AAA and the AICPA working together have to keep trying to make some progress on this one. Again, I think the CAQ, uh, through its efforts, I think what the Research Advisory Board has done in terms of grants for research, uh, I think the access to audit personnel has been terrific. And again, inclusion in the, in the research symposium. Those, those kind of efforts are very important. So while the foundation has a role, I think this is another profession-wide undertaking to say, to whatever extent we 
I won't say slipped away, but we weren't as connected as we wanted to be. It is vitally important as we go forward, we make sure that all the things, uh, that we're, we're connecting academia and practice. And so I know the firms are doing their bit. Uh, I encourage them to continue to support research efforts. I know how difficult that can be sometimes in the crunch of serving clients and doing everything else, but I think they need to do that. And I think the firms uh, do work through their connectivity to faculty. So in my case, I work with the uh, Academic Resource Center of the UI Foundation. I know all the firms have something like that. But it just really helps that uh, as someone's embarking on research, they have a very good understanding of what is it that practice would really value in that, and not to, not to kind of mold the outcomes, but to help with research survey designs and things that say, well, if you do this, you'll end up with something that truly would be practical and relevant, as opposed to something that has to be well, Randy, you are a model of a retired partner who <laughs> gives back, and uh, I, I know you're enjoying it. Heard you tell, tell me and others that you enjoy your retirement, yeah, but sure. you do give back, and, and so we all owe you a debt of gratitude. So thank you so much for all the work that you're doing, but also for joining me today. Absolutely. And thank then, you. My pleasure. And so that will end this Profession in Focus series, and we look forward to seeing you at our next one. Thank you.